It's July 2025 and the internet is still a maze of half-baked REST template versus web client blog posts. One post says REST template is dead, another says Fane could solve all of your problems, and you're still confused which client should you take for your next project. And the main goal of this video is to cut through that noise. By the end of this video, you will know exactly which Spring Boot client fits your use case and you will have a pocket ready checklist for picking the right tool every single time. Whether you are booting up your first Spring Boot microservice or raggling the fleet of them, this guide is for you. Ready? Let's dive in. Now, let's start with blocking clients and take a look into them. REST template is the OG blocking client that has been around since Spring 3. It is using template method design pattern. Let's check some code for it. First thing first, let's set up a REST template bin. There are actually a few different ways to do this. And you can see some of the common ways here. Let's talk about how you actually create a REST template bin in your Spring Boot project. There are more than one way to do it, and each style gives you different levels of control. Here is the most basic way. And this is perfect if you just want the defaults and don't care about timeouts, adding custom interceptors, adding custom error handler or other special configurations. But what if you want to set things like timeout or adding your custom interceptors? That's where the REST template builder comes into the scene. Please check this out. This approach is much cleaner and lets you customize your REST template without a lot of boilerplate code. Plus, it plays really well with Spring Boot's auto configuration. Now, if you need more control, for example, if you want to use your specific HTTP client library or just fine tune the request factory, here is another way you can use. This method lets you dig deep and set up things exactly how you want it under the hood. So, whether you want it simple, customizable, or just fine-tuned, Spring's got you covered for creating your REST template beam. All right, now let's see how we can use REST template to make real API calls. Here is a service class that talks to JSON placeholder and does all the basics, fetching posts, getting a single post by ID, and even creating a new post. Let me break it down first. So, to get all posts, you can just call get for entity and pass in the URL and the type you want back. In this case, an array of post objects. Then to get a single post, you need to do something similar. Still, you can use get for object, pass the URL and the ID you want, and boom, you can get the post object back. Super clean. And if you want to create a new post, just use post for object, pass in the URL and pass the data and you will get the new post back from the API. JSON placeholder actually fakes this in Z for you. So, with just a couple of lines, REST template lets you hit any REST API, handle the response as Java objects, and keep your code simple and readable. And to actually try out these methods, I set up a quick controller so we can hit these endpoints from Postman, Curl, or even easier, a plain HTTP request file. The controller just maps the service methods directly to the HTTP endpoints like this and this. Now, to make life easy for testing, I put together this HTTP file. Just drop it into your project and you can instantly send requests to your endpoints with just one click. Now, let's check out REST client, the new kit on the block and the official successor to REST template. So, why did Spring introduce REST client? The reason is REST template API got cluttered with a ton of overloaded methods and it was getting confusing fast which method to use. Spring listened to developer feedback and realized it was time for a cleaner, more modern API. And that's exactly what REST client brings to the table. With REST client, you get a simple, fluent, and chainable API. It's much harder to make mistakes and your code looks way cleaner. It's available out of box in new Spring Framework and Spring Boot. If you're starting a new project, you should really consider using REST client instead of REST template because its API makes it easier to use. Now, let's see how you can set it up and use it in real world. Here is how you create and configure it. 
The setup is even simpler than REST template. So we are setting the base URL once so you don't have to repeat it everywhere. You can also add things like default headers, authentication, or customizer if you want, but this gets you started for most cases. Now let's look at how to actually use REST client in a service class to talk to the JSON placeholder API. I'm sure you'd notice how clean this is compared to the old way. For getting a single post, it's basically the same. You just need to add the post ID. And for creating a post, call post method, pass your data to the body and retrieve and get the result. No more guessing which overloaded method you're supposed to use. So with REST client, no more guessing which overloaded method you're supposed to use. It's a straightforward and fluent. And just like before, I wired up a controller so you can actually hit these endpoints and see them in action. Here is what that looks like. Just a quick tip. REST client is still a synchronous blocking client just like REST template. And the fact that it is synchronous doesn't mean it's a bad client. It's a very good client and i would say for most of the cases it's a perfect fit and remember rest client is the way forward if you're writing new code you will get a cleaner api easier configuration and less room for mistakes s spring boot also offers open Fane, which is a declarative http client here is what makes it a good option instead of writing all the http plumbing yourself you just declare an interface, slap on a couple of annotations, and Spring generates the client code for you. It really feels like magic. No more boilerplate. But OpenFane isn't just about saving your time on REST calls. It's part of Spring Cloud, a toolbox that helps you build serious microservices. With OpenFane, you can easily hook into the advanced features like client-side load balancing, service discovery, and even circuit breakers, all out of the box. One thing to remember, OpenFane is very abstract. It hides a lot of low-level details. That's great for clean code, but if you ever run into a tricky bug, debugging can be harder. In most cases, you will have to rely on logs to see what's going on under the hood. Now, let's check out how simple this can be in code. This interface is all you need and Spring would take care of the implementation part. So you can just inject and use it like any other service. Here is a quick service layer that uses the Fane client. And just like with other clients, I set up a controller so you can try everything out. But let's have a quick demo over the cloud features. First, client-side load balancing. If you use a Spring Cloud Load Balancer, then you need to just use a service name and you don't need to hard code the URL and it will automatically distribute the requests. This is the same for service discovery. With a discovery service like Eureka, just use the service name in your Fane client. Spring Cloud will resolve it to an actual instance for you. No more changing URLs when things scale. And also it offers circuit breaker. Add a fallback to your Fane client for resilience. Or integrate with resilience for j or Spring Cloud circuit breaker for even more control. So with Open Fane, you're not just making HTTP calls cleaner. You're plugging straight into the world of modern scalable microservices. It's super clean, super powerful, and very strong. But remember, it is so abstract and debugging wouldn't be easy. So still, I would say REST template and REST client could be a good option. But OpenFane is also a very good choice. If you know, you don't need to customize a lot of things with your REST clients. All right, now the reactive approach. But what does reactive actually mean? And how is it different from the normal way of doing things? With regular or synchronous code, every time you make an HTTP call, your thread just sits and waits for the response. Imagine standing in line at this store. You can't do anything else until it's your turn. That's how traditional clients like REST template and even REST client work. They block the thread until the response comes back. 
and reactive programming flips this idea on its head. With reactive code, instead of blocking and waiting, you send out a request and move on. When the response eventually comes back, your app handles it right away. Kind of like having a buzzer at a restaurant that goes off when your food is ready. This means your server can now handle way more traffic using fewer resources because it's not wasting time just waiting around. Now, let's see how we can actually set up a web client as being tool for building these kind of non-blocking, super efficient applications. First, you create a web client bin, just like this. This gives us a ready-to-go web client. Let's set up the base URL so we don't have to repeat it everywhere. Here is how we can use a web client in a service class. Let's break it down. The fetch our reactive method returns a flux of posts. Think of flux as a stream of zero or more items that arrive over time. Fetch one reactive returns a mono, which is just one item or none. Kind of like a promise if you know JavaScript. Then create reactive also returns a mono for when you create a new post. If your whole app is reactive, you would use the mono and flux methods directly. But if you want to keep your controllers in the old school way, returning normal Java objects, you can still use the block to turn those reactive results into regular objects, which is not advised why you should do that. That's what these last three methods do. They are just convenient wrappers for traditional apps. And finally, just like before, I set up a controller so you can try these things out. With web client, you get the power of non-blocking highly scalable code. If you ever need to handle tons of requests, streaming data, or controlling the back pressure, then maybe web client is the way to go. But remember, it has a way harder learning curve and also it is not the easiest one to debug. I would say it would be so hard and challenging to debug and you should go for web client if you're 100% sure it's what you need. So please first try to understand the Spring Web Flux, the reactive stack, and then go for it. Otherwise, go for the other clients that we mentioned. So there you have it, a complete roadmap through every major REST client in the Spring ecosystem. If you want something simple, reliable, and easy to debug, REST template or the newer REST client is your best friend. Need super clean, declarative code for microservices and want to tap into Spring Cloud's power tools? OpenFane is the way to go. And if you're aiming for serious streaming or want your app to squeeze every drop out of your server's resources, nothing beats the flexibility and performance of the client. Remember, there is no single best choice. It all depends on your app's need and your team's comfort with blocking versus reactive versus declarative code. The best part, Spring gives you the freedom to mix and match or switch styles as your app grows. Now you know how each approach works, what its strengths and weaknesses are, and how to try them out yourself. No more guessing, no more copy-paste confusion.